it's got to be widespread amongst so many folks and they probably have it and they don't even know that they have it, right? Yes. Symptoms. Let's get into that next. Plants that are infected with hoplite and viroid, what are the symptoms that you can see on the plant? Yes, absolutely. So hoplite and viroid has, uh, we call it what it's called as pleiotropic, which means that there are a ton of different symptoms. Um, and it, it basically affects every system um, of the plant. So different things that you can see. Um, it affects uh, the, the growth of the plant. So you can see the uh, stunting of the plant. It also can affect the shape of how it grows. So as opposed to like a normal 45 degree angle of the branches coming off that main stem, when plants are infected with hoplite and viroid, the stems tend to come out more horizontally. Um, you can see uh, leaf chlorosis, misshapen leaves. Sometimes the leaves will overlap. Um, sometimes they'll look too shiny or depending on, you know, the specific, specific cultivar you're looking at, they can also um, kind of turn a little yellow or curled up. Um, rooting is another uh, major issue for plants that have hoplite and viroid. They tend to root very slowly. Um, and the root ball itself is reduced in uh, density. Um, so if you're, you know, if you if you plant a clone and it's trying to root and it just taking forever, that's a really good sign that that particular plant may be infected with hoplite and viroid. Um, and then, of course, it also affects the development of flowers on plants. And so the flowers tend to be underdeveloped, um, reduced in mass. Um, you know, reduced in, in chemicals and things like that. And so um, it, it, it kind of takes down every system of the plant um, and it, it, it renders it, you know, whatever, whatever, especially if you're looking for medicinal properties from that particular plant, um, those, those uh, different chemicals are not being produced. And so the plant is not nearly as useful from that standpoint. Wow. So it hits the plant all over. And yeah, yes. some of those symptoms that you mentioned can be done by other things, right? So you mentioned like chlorosis, for example. There's a number of problems that happen. Yep. We get yellowing leaves. You know, hoplite and viroid is one of them. Leaf overlapping was an interesting one. I actually had a plant that had leaves overlapping. And okay. I was like, oh no, hoplite and viroid, because I had learned that in the past. And so I actually got that plant tested and it actually came up negative. Mm -hmm. So I was a little bit surprised buy that because I hadn't seen that in any other cultivars that I had grown. But yeah, the overlapping leaves was, was a really interesting one. And then, uh, wow, root development slower, smaller root ball, underdeveloped flowers, stunning a growth. There's just so many different things that this viroid does to the plant. Yes. Yeah. But now I should mention that um, one of the trickiest and most insidious things about this particular pathogen is that while all of those symptoms are possible, um, it's possible that either only some or none will manifest in the plant. And so even if you're looking at a plant and you're like, oh, this plant looks great, it looks super healthy, everything is fine, um, it's still possible that um, it's infected. It's definitely possible that it will appear asymptomatic during the early stages of growth, and you're not going to notice any changes until that plant goes grows up into maturity and goes um, into flower. And then often you'll see those symptoms then. And so it's important to understand what the symptoms could be, but it's also important to realize that you may have an infected plant and it, it looks pretty good. And so it, the only way to be sure is to get that test, like you said. This clip is brought to you by AC Infinity. Use discount code MrGrowIt15 to save on any of their products. Thank you.